that's inside this Epiphone case. Now, without further ado, let's open it up and see what's inside. So I just want to apologize for the poor camera work. Um, this is my first video and I still don't have all of the camera knowledge and all that stuff down. I'm just using my cell phone to do this, um, but hopefully things get better from here on. So what we have here is the Koryoyu to Les Paul Standard Blue Burst by Epiphone. Um, this is a special model that was done in collaboration with something called Argonavis from Bang Dream. Uh, let's take it on, check out the burst a little bit more. So it's very blue, uh, almost looks like an aquarium to be honest, and that's uh, kind of why I wanted to buy this. So going through the specs, it's a maple top with a AAA quilted maple veneer, mahogany body, uh, there's no weight relief, of course, uh, and the finish is what they call blue burst. Um, the fingerboard material is Indian laurel, 22 frets, uh, and then it has a 1950s style rounded C uh, neck profile. Um, has your standard Epiphone hardware. Okay, so removing the stickers from the pickups, one of the joys of buying a new guitar. Pro Bucker 2 in the neck, Pro Bucker 3 in the bridge. The controls are more similar to what you find on the modern series, which has the two push-pull volume pots and um, the two tones, so you can split the coils of the humbuckers. So Bang Dream is a media franchise that has an animated show, games, all kinds of music-related um, products, CDs and whatnot. I think they've, they've got video games on the Switch and stuff like that as well. Um, so basically it's about, um, actually I don't even know what it's about. Um, let's see. Okay. okay, I'm not going to watch any of this, but it looks like it's probably about a bunch of schoolgirls that form bands and then, yeah, whatever. <laughs> So what's interesting is that um, the characters in the show or franchise, they, um, they use actual guitars. Um, you go to the collaboration page on the ESP website, for example. Um, and, hey, look, there's Pokemon Pick Collection. Um, so there's a Bank Dream site here. And if you click into, let's just pick this one, I guess, because it looks kind of cool. Um, so they use actual ESP guitars and um, go down to here, uh, Kawasaya. Sorry. These are your, these are just generally custom shop models and you can see from the price that, you know, they're at uh, 657,000 yen, which is roughly around you know, $6,500 US. You also have the less expensive LTD versions. Um, they're actually not branded LTD. They actually have the Bang Dream logo on it. Um, but you can tell from the price, it's around 750 US dollars or so. And then you have Argonavis, which is, I think, some kind of a spin-off of Bang Dream, but it's just all guys. Um, so I think that's the main difference. So we go to their character page. Argo Navis. So that roughly translates to something like the starship that um, travels with the winds of destiny or something like that. It sounds really sci fi. I mean, I'm not sure if I looked at this or uh, I should say, if I didn't look at this, I would be able to figure out this is some music related show because I've never seen the show but um, it seems that they feature um, actual instruments so for example uh, this is a Gibson Les Paul this is an SG bass both of these are actually available uh, from the custom shop I think Trogli actually did a review of this particular 
uh, Gibson model. Um, this is also the, the one that the Epiphone is based off of. And then if you scroll down a little bit, um, you'll see that these guys use uh, Dean guitars. Okay, so let's um, take a look. Gyro, oh, sorry, Gyro. Yeah, so uh, looks like these things actually exist. Let's click on some pictures here, stage gear. Right, so these are the actual guitars that are played by the people that play those characters in the show, I guess. Um, ah, nice diesel. So getting back to the guitar, one of the things that I noticed immediately was how rounded the fretboard was. Um, th there were absolutely no sharp frets. Um, and, and I don't mean this in the sense of, you know, your typical uh, Epiphone quality. This is, you know, if you take a close look and here, here's the tissue test. Um, each of the frets were properly filed and rounded. I don't know if they do this um, just because this model is being um, sold through certain retailers and they were asked to do it that way. But um, in any case, that was um, one of the main things. And all of the frets were properly polished. Um, there's none of that scratchiness that you can find on any of the other standard um, 599 Epiphones. So um, in terms of case candy, um, this is one of the selling points, I guess, if you're a fan of um, Argonavis or Bang Dream or that kind of thing. Um, but what it comes with is you know, your typical Epiphone case candy. And then you get a um, Bang Dream Argonavis drama CD. Um, I don't think I'm going to listen to that. Um, it's, and then you get this um, certificate um, from Epiphone. Um, you know, it's a nice touch. Nice to see that you know, Epiphone's doing more exclusive models as well. So one thing I wanted to talk about is the neck profile because a lot of people, you know, whether they complain about it or not, they say that the Epiphone neck profile is different than the standard Gibson Les Paul one. So what I have here is some gardening wire. Um, you can also use twist ties. You know, I have a, you know, if you if you don't have wire, just use twist ties are fine as well. This is just like a really rough estimation anyway. I don't have like an expensive um, profile depth gauge. And we're just gonna you know, test the neck profile on two different guitars. Here's the one from the Epiphone. And then this is a Gibson Les Paul Standard 50s, you know, the one that they released this year with the P90s. I'm gonna test it against that. Here's the profile from the Les Paul Standard, the Gibson one. And next what we're going to do is we're going to trace these into a um, drawing program, which is what I did. I, I used the tablet to do this, a uh, pen tablet. Um, I actually did it for a couple more other guitars, which we'll be featuring in other videos. But you know, when you compare the two of them, it's almost identical. The real difference is because of the fingerboard. If you look at the edges at the top, it's more rounded. And because of that and the lack of fret nibs, your hand actually feels like it's grasping more of the neck. And I think that's really what contributes to people thinking that the Epiphone neck profile is drastically different. So let's take a few measurements on the neck. At the nut, it's around 1.703 inches. On the Gibson Standard, it's 1.721, so you know, a hair wider. On the Epiphone, at the 12th fret, it's, what is this, 2.110. And at the 12th fret on the Gibson, 2.083. Body construction-wise, the back is mahogany with a veneer. You can clearly see that there are a few pieces. I think there's one, two, three, 
counted at least maybe five pieces. So your typical FFO construction. Now let's hear how this thing sounds. So this is Ishibashigaki's special website just for this particular model. You'll see that it has like, you know, a picture of it, and price, and then it's a pretty well designed website. It has, uh, you know, the background that we just talked about, um, and then you know the goodies. Here we go, gallery, and then specifications. Um, if you look at the specifications, interestingly, it says that it's uh, it's got a white PVC nut. Uh, although if you uh, touch it, it's basically the same stuff as what um, they use on the other Epiphone standards um, this year, which is that new bone stuff um, from uh, Graph Tech. And then, um, but but you know, I mean, they're they're just saying what it is, which is white PVC. That that's essentially what it is. Um, the hardware, and then um, if you look at the electronics, it's a Pro Bucker 2, Pro Bucker 3, and then with two volumes and two tones. But then this one, this particular model, has the same specifications as the modern series, which includes the push-pull coil splits. Uh, it comes with the Epilite case and the accessories, you know, the drama CD and then the certification. So the big question is, is it worth it? So if you take a look at the original price it listed for, it was originally 79,200 yen, which is approximately $790 US, something like that. I mean, if you exchange rates change all the time. Um, but as time went on, if you look at Ishibashi themselves, they're now selling, selling this for 69,200. That's almost $100 off. But if we go over to Ikebe and do a search. Let's see. Okay, 
Okay, you can see it's uh, it's even cheaper here. It's um, 63,000 yen, which is around $630. Now, if you think about how much a standard Les Paul costs, Epiphone Les Paul, it's $599 retail at Sweetwater. And then the Epilite cases are, what, like $89.99. This is actually a much better deal. And you also get the coil split if that's your thing. So the other thing is, if you're in the market for a blue figured top Les Paul, you don't really have any other choice. Uh, there's the there's the modern one, which I think um, I think that's a classic, and um, it also has some funky burst color going on for that one. Um, I think it's called the Caribbean burst or something. And then you have the uh, the blue metallic one in the Muse line, but that's not a full size body. And so if that's your thing, you know, obviously that's another choice. Um, but the other thing is there's nothing on this guitar that identifies it as uh, Argonavis or Goryeo Yuto or, or anything Bang Dream related. So if, you're, if all you want, which is kind of my uh, motivation for getting this, uh, is a blue Les Paul, then this is a good choice. Now, um, I'm not sure Ishimashi actually ships overseas. I don't think they do. Just check here. Ah, okay. So going to their web shop, I think, hold on, is there a FAQ? Oh, here we go. Global for overseas customers. Okay, well, I'm not going to read through all this. I mean, you can figure out if they actually ship overseas or not, but at least they have a page for overseas customers, so I, I assume they do something overseas. Uh, Ikebe, I think they do as well. Okay, there we go. For overseas customers, product inquiry English. Okay, I, I'll leave you to read that on your own, but I'm sure there's probably some way they can work things out for you if you want to ship this overseas. So hopefully you enjoyed that video. Thank you for watching to the end. Uh, if you do like this kind of content, please like and subscribe, and hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.